Uh, welcome to Footprint. Footprint. Uh, I knew that would happen. Footprintchannel.tv. Um, and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, food waste and uh, a whole range of issues. Uh, very much a moving brief, and that's the uh, that's the uh, name of the session today. My name's John Twitchin from Copper Consultancy. Um, some of you will have been uh, involved in the one we did last year, and uh, you can still find that um, available as a download. Um, Today, we're going to be uh, covering a number, of, a number of issues, very interesting issues. Um, first up, we'll be hearing um, from RAP about some new research. Um, and uh, then we'll be looking at what's happening and analysing what's happening. And most important of all is we'll be uh, looking at what next and what do we need to do next. Um, <clears throat> so, as I say, many of you will remember the, uh, the, the broadcast from last year. Uh, and you will remember uh, that we, uh, that we uh, have a uh, box... Um, for questions, so there's ways that you can um, send in your questions uh, to us. Um, we'd look very much like your questions to be coming in, and uh, particularly in the first session, but also in the second session, where we have a panel uh, joining us. Um, so in the box, you'll be able to ask the questions. You can also get a more general uh, discussion going uh, on, uh, on Twitter. And if you could use uh, the hashtag um, FPTV, so footprint. Um, TV, if you like, FPTV. And the other hashtag uh, that RAP are using today, as I understand it, is cut food waste. So hashtag cut food waste. So um, you'll now see, I believe, some multiple choice questions uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the screen. Um, the question is, with the multiple choice answers, the question is, what's the biggest barrier for your business in tackling food waste? So a nice, big, broad, open question to start with. Um, one, the cost to my business, or your business, uh, for example, new equipment, infrastructure, and so on. Uh, two, a lack of guidance and support to help me, or you, um, engaging your staff, my staff, uh, and also, you, you might have another one, um, so please tell us about that as well. Now, as I mentioned, there's two parts to the session today. Uh, the first uh, is a one-to-one -one interview with Dr. Richard Swanell, uh, Director of Sustainable Food Systems at RAP. Um, and there have obviously been some advances in the uh, hospitality and food service agreement um, and also some new research, and we'll come to that in a second. Um, the other part, the second part, after a short film, uh, is a panel discussion with people from across the supply chain to talk about what's happening and where we're going. So, I think, without any further ado, we can move on now um, to, the, uh, to the interview um, with, uh, with Richard, so Dr. Richard Swanell. Um, welcome. To, uh, to, to the session today. Um, we've been reading in the news lately a lot about uh, a whole range of issues to do with the grocery sector and uh, some big numbers from Tesco and from other people as well. Um, and obviously there's uh, you know, uh, some new research into household food waste that's been catching the headlines as well. But I understand you've got some new research that you'd, um, you'd obviously like to tell us about and that I, I understand you're launching today, you've just launched now. So um, could you tell us about that, that research, Richard? Yeah, certainly I can, John. So what we've done is gone right across the hospitality sector and looked in each of nine subsectors. That's hotels, pubs, mm -hmm. uh, restaurants, quick service restaurants, leisure, education, healthcare, services and staff catering. So right across the piece mm -hmm. to look at the total amount of waste that's uh, being produced. And we've worked out it's about 2.87 million tons in total uh, and of, of about 46% of that is currently being recycled. Mm -hmm. Now what we've also done is then worked with the trade associations like the BHA and the BBPA and the BIFM to come up with simple guidance for each of those subsectors mm -hmm. as to how they can reduce waste and save money and how they can recycle more more and waste money, and those are being published today on our website. So a lot, a lot of food waste, we're talking about a lot of waste being generated here in the UK. Yes, there's a lot of waste, and I think what's quite interesting is the food waste figures are really quite striking. So of that 2.87 million tonnes, the total amount of food waste is 920,000 tonnes, and what we've done is done a lot of work trying to work out what's that costing businesses, mm -hmm. and the answer is that's costing 2.5 billion pounds. Mm -hmm. It's a really sizable chunk. When you start thinking, working into the detail, it works out at about 2,800 uh, 2, uh, pounds per tonne of food wasted, which means on average, and it is a big average, but on average a sector is spending uh, uh, 
an outlet is spending about £10,000 a year on food waste. So there's real scope here to reduce it. And the figure that really struck me, John, was that basically on weight equivalent, you know, we're throwing away about one meal in every six. Which is uh, staggering. Yeah, It's absolutely. a huge amount. And it sounds like it's more than a few hundred quid here and there. Yeah. And therefore there should be an economic imperative at least um, to tackle it. Where, where's this food waste coming from in particular? Well, the, the, the food to the most waste is probably what you'd expect, actually, which is the carbohydrates. So it's things like uh, bread, it's things mm. like pasta, rice, potatoes. They're the big areas where there's 40% there's a, a, a of what is wasted comes from that, that area. Mm -hmm. So obviously at all, at all stages in, in production, prep, and then obviously, obviously plate scrapings too. Yes. I mean, we, we, we looked at the breakdown of that on average right across the piece. Yeah. So what, what, what is causing this food waste? Well, 21% uh, of it uh, comes from actually uh, from spoilage. So things yeah. basically going out of date before they can be actually used. Yeah. 45% actually is in preparation. So that's about actually getting the right amount of food in and making the best use of it yeah. and minimizing the wastage at the end of the day. So that's a big area for it. And then 34% is actually for, uh, from customer plates. And here the opportunity I think is around you know, offering choice in portions so that consumers can eat the, the amount of food they really want. If they're really hungry, they'll have a big portion. If they're less hungry, they eat the smaller portions. And that way you get, you're delighting your customers as well as saving money. It's front of my mind this morning I had the largest croissant in the world, the largest one I've ever seen, but I did finish it. Um, what, what, what sort of progress are we making with the, with the agreement then? Obviously that's uh, it's a little, little way mm. down the line now. Yeah. The, the data helps obviously yep. you know, to, to move things on, but where are we at? Well I think one of the key things about the data today is it really brings over the imperative, the business case for action. And when we spoke a year ago, John, I was yeah. saying well, I was really pleased that we'd launched the hospitality and food service agreement yeah. and we had about we had 17 signatories and supporters. Mm -hmm. We're now at 170. So really mm -hmm. made good progress over the year and it's about a quarter of the entire sector uh, by turnover. So that's a great result. But what we're hoping to do today with the research that's uh, been published is that people say, well, there's a real business imperative here mm -hmm. and maybe joining the agreement will help me deliver real change, help me prevent waste and recycle more uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's some leadership there, there's, you know, there, there, there's some progress being made, but obviously we're seeing statutory targets coming in, mm. in other parts of the British Isles. Mm. Um, why, why, why aren't we just you know, cut to the chase and, and, and go and, and make it and legislate? Mm have some statutory yeah. targets. Well, I think what's interesting, I mean, let's just be clear about what's happening. So from the 1st of January uh, 2014 in Scotland, mm. you, you will have to recycle you know, mm -hmm. widely recycled materials like paper, like tin, like glass, <coughs> like cardboard and separate recycle. And also, if you're a, um, a hospitality company that produces more than 50 kilograms of uh, waste per week, mm -hmm. um, then you will uh, need to segregate that uh, and get that separately collected. Now then in two years' time, those that are actually producing more than five kilograms per week will also be covered by the same regulations. Now there are some businesses that might be exempt given their location and it's worthwhile checking the uh, Resource Efficient Scotland website. Mm -hmm. It's got lots of details about how, how this might be implicated. Mm -hmm. So that's going to come through and I think other, it will be quite interesting to see how that works uh, uh, within Scotland and, and how the other uh, governments of the UK respond to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously decisions on regulations are decisions for, uh, for those governments directly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, uh, ban on food waste and, and so on, all those sorts of discussions. Mm. We, there's always two, two views on this. I guess from my perspective, if you, if, you make, if you legislate, you have to measure, you have to police, and ultimately you may even have to get involved in, in, in solving the problem. Mm. So uh, it's, never, it's never black and white, is it, I suppose? Well, I suppose from our perspective, I'd say the key thing that this research uh, shows is that prevention can really save you significant amounts of money. So, well, you know, the big focus, rather than thinking, what do I do at the end, I think, mm. what can I do at the beginning? How can I prevent waste arising in the first place? Mm. Um, and then from that, and I'm preventing actually never arises, or then if it is arising, can I share it for human consumption? So can mm -hmm. I use uh, charities like mm -hmm. Plan Zero and Fair Share and others, food banks to take that and for human consumption then if it's legally permissible think about animal feed because that's a good use of it uh, and then after that think about recycling through AD and composting mm -hmm. and then only at the very end and I think that's the key bit think
think about all of those because there's real scope here to both reduce waste and to drive up recycling rates. So, mm -hmm. for example, our estimates are that there's about 12% of, of food waste is currently recycled mm -hmm. from the hospitality sector. Real scope to drive that significantly higher mm -hmm. and therefore yeah, and, really, and, and, and save money, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember your questions, of course, on Twitter and in the box below on the, on, on the screen where you're logged in. Um, we've had, we've had a, a few in already. There's one come in on, on that subject of, you know, up, up, the, uh, up the chain, if you like, um, from uh, Richard Hemsley. Uh, and in, in his experience, he's saying that, uh, you know, there's perhaps more that could be done by packaging companies um, to inform their customers about the packaging and about what could be done with it. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess there's a, it's, it's outside of, of producer responsibility rules, perhaps into stewardship and, and ownership of a problem. Mm -hmm. Is there some more work around that? Yeah, perhaps? I mean, and it's worthwhile. So, so the data we've, we've produced today, John, has sort of said that uh, there's about 1.33 million tonnes of packaging in, in the total waste. And uh, that's, uh, just over 60% of that is currently recycled. So there's this good story mm -hmm. there. There's already quite a lot of recycling mm -hmm. going on. However, when you look into the residual bin, the general waste stream, you also find that there is quite a lot of recyclable packaging in there and 80% of that packaging could easily have mm. been recycled. Mm. So there is an opportunity, and I think there is elements, yes, there's labelling that can help, and there's on-pack labels that are already exist that, 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 ch that tell you about recycling facilities, uh, uh, recyclability, I beg your pardon, of, the, of, of packaging. And also I think you can integrate this into your work you're doing within, within catering establishments, educating people to say, actually, do you know this is recyclable, here's the bins, use mm. them, because that's going to save us money, but it's also going to benefit the environment. Mm. In my view, definitely more work to be done there, but mm. some, some progress for sure. Um, just back to the other end of the pipe, if you like, mm. and um, you know, uh, there, there, there is a lot of infrastructure coming through the system now. The planning, the planning system can mm. slow down the progress, and we are, we are seeing more, more facilities come on stream. Uh, how, how do you feel the you know, waste and resource management companies and the organics processing companies are stepping up to the, the challenge? Well, I'm, I've, I've been really pleased with the progress I've seen over the last couple of years. The inf investment in particular AD infrastructure has been substantial. Mm -hmm. So we've really seen a lot of food waste uh, processing AD plants come on stream and so that's less of a barrier mm -hmm. and now what we're seeing is waste management companies beginning to think okay well how can I now offer this service to my customer base and so we're really pleased that there are quite a, quite a number of um, waste management companies, SWR, BIFA, uh, CETA that are actually members of the mm -hmm. hospitality and food service agreement um, and, hope, uh, and what they're doing is thinking how can we offer high quality resources Recycling services to the sector and take advantage of this new infrastructure mm -hmm. that's coming on stream so we can recycle more food waste. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so in terms of um, I, I, you know the, 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 the end, the very end of that process, mm. thinking about the use of that material, mm. um, uh, where where is that? Because there's a there's a real opportunity to close the loop. Yes, absolutely. You know, and use that the digestate or the yeah. or the compost material, the yeah. past material, if you like. Yeah, absolutely. Would you just like to explain that a little bit. Yeah, more? so I mean, and that's really interesting. That you talk about closing the loop because one of the ways you can see all of the things we've discussed this morning mm -hmm. is it's about moving towards a more resource efficient circular economy. So we're actually making things using less resources, we're wasting less in that process uh, and then what we, can't, uh, what we can't avoid we then collect and put through AD and composting and then from that you get a, a fertiliser replacement um, that then you can use to grow more crops. So you've got a lovely loop going round, you know, you're actually using the materials that's coming out and also in the process through AD you've generated renewable heat and power which of course can be benefit can be used locally and reduce carbon impacts and indeed keep a lid on uh, on energy uh, energy prices for those companies. So it's a win-win all the way around, I think, um, uh, in order to be able to drive a more resource efficient circular economy. Are, are we really there in terms of you know in terms of trust in this end product? I am mm -hmm. personally. I think it's fa fantastic stuff, mm -hmm. but. You know, are, are, the, are the big growers there? Are the, are the supermarkets there? Yes, I think there's really been a real improvement in that space. Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of field trials being done mm -hmm. to build confidence in, 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 in the products that are coming out. And of course, also, we've got PAS 110, mm -hmm. uh, we're quality standard, which helps people build confidence in the adverts. PAS 110 for AD, PAS 100 for, for compost. Mm -hmm. And I think that quality standard does help people think, yeah, I've actually got a really good quality fertilizer replacement. I understand what's in it, I understand how 
how it can help me grow my crops. So mm -hmm. I think, I mean, there's a way to go. I wouldn't say it's all done yet, John, mm -hmm. but there's, there's been significant progress over the last couple of years. And I guess the other aspect for me um, is really thinking about, um, I, well, I suppose the consumer engagement mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the front of house conundrum in mm -hmm. particular, and we'll perhaps explore that a bit more in the panel session mm -hmm. in, a, in a few minutes' time. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, surely it's the biggest challenge. I mean, we've, we've, we've thrown a, load of, a whole load of capital at the problem, and perhaps it just comes down to the, you know, getting real about the, the revenue and the behaviour change components now. Well, I think one of the things that the research shows today is, is you know, what can you do as a business to reduce uh, your, your costs uh, through reducing food waste? And I think so there's so some simple steps you can do. Measure the, uh, the amount of food waste that's being generated, and in that, of course, yeah, customer waste from customer plates will be part of that. Understand why that is being uh, in your particular business, why that waste arises, and then work with your staff to say, okay, how can we reduce this? Now, clearly, you know, interacting with consumers is a key part of this, mm -hmm. and understanding what comes back um, as plate waste can then inform you. Say, well, okay, maybe we need to change our menus in order to sort of respond to that feedback we're getting from customers in that very direct way. No pun, feedback. Yeah, no, no, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, but. I, I think that way I think is really really important and I think also think of it in terms of choice you know what this is about is saying you know consumers don't particularly want to waste food um, but also they want to have the amount of food that they they, you know, they need for their daily mm -hmm. lives so giving them choice as to the, the size of portions really helps them I think uh, give give what they want but also help businesses managing uh, waste and reducing costs mm. okay um, and in terms of uh, in terms of that that whole supply, where do you think the biggest wins are through the supply chain? You know, for the prevent thinking particularly about preventing. Obviously, there's a lot of light waiting going on, mm -hmm. reusable containers, yep. Yep. and obviously in prep as well. But where where are the biggest wins over the next uh, few years? Uh, well, I, I mean, this is where and one of the reasons the, um, uh, the hospitality and food service agreement focuses on waste prevention inside catering establishments, and indeed also driving up recycling is we think there are real opportunities. Now, exact, and, and one of the things the research we published today shows um, is that here is where to focus. And, and what you think, what you find from that is that, you know, yes, we can do things on our packaging, we can optimise our packaging, mm -hmm. we can move to renewable, re reusable systems, we can recycle significantly more, and indeed, actually, there's real scope to reduce food waste at, at all stages, you know, mm -hmm. in spoilage, in preparation, and indeed in, um, and on customer plates. And I think what, what the key bit is understanding that it'll be different for different types mm. of establishments. So do the measurement, work out what's going to work for your business, and then you'll really save, save money. Mm -hmm. Now, in other areas, we are also focusing down the supply chain through the Courtauld commitment and also with, through the Love Food, Hate Waste campaign. We're also helping consumers reduce it, so uh, reduce food waste as well. So there's a real sort of head of steam here uh, trying to actually reduce food waste across the country. Mm. I think uh, think about love food hay waste in particular. You just mm. mentioned that, and um, um, but it also probably relates to other aspects of you know food service and, and hospitality. Um, this whole issue around use by sell by best yeah. before. Yeah. Uh, I think we're probably making a bit of progress in terms of you know knowledge, mm. general knowledge. Mm. But are there some some things you just want to re-emphasise there? Yes, I mean because uh, I think this is relevant to hospitality and food service as well. I mean clearly the understanding of use by is absolutely key. That's a mm. food safety issue. So you but you can use right up to the end of the use by date, and you can freeze up to the end of the use by date. Best before is exactly what it says. It's best before, but it's perfectly edible afterwards, and you can use it. So I think that's sort of a key key message to get across and I think that is probably widely known within the sector um, but what's interesting is you're seeing innovations on packaging where you're seeing those the labelling is much much clearer mm. only one label um, and indeed it's either a used by or a best before just to be really clear on it. Mm. I'd like to uh, I'd like to source that question but it came through from someone called Anonymous <laughs> uh, so um, by all means you know give us your name uh, and we can we can then uh, refer to you. Um, there's, a, there's another um, question come in in relation to Wales where the, perhaps the municipal targets are, are, are very high actually, aren't they? Uh, and obviously food waste and everything that goes with it is going to be a very important component of that. Um, wh why shouldn't we have similar um, high standards for, um, for industry? is the question from there. Well, so and we covered it a bit earlier, but I think it's an important issue. It is, and I think it's worthwhile saying, you know, one of the interesting things about the research we published today 
is that we're saying 46% of recycling is already happening. That, that's comparable mm -hmm. with what's happening municipal, yeah. with municipal anyway. Yeah. Uh, you know, packaging is over 60% mm -hmm. recycling, so there's good progress we made. But one thing about the agreement is, you know, the target for hospitality and food mm -hmm. services is 70%. So I would argue we've already got some ambitious targets uh, there as well, because those, that's the sort of level that you expect that some countries are setting for mm -hmm. municipal ones. Um, the key thing, one of the other things we've launched today actually is a food waste uh, recycling microsite on our website because we realise there's quite a lot of people understand recycling of packaging reasonably well, although there's more that can be done. But food waste is in there, food waste recycling is particularly challenging because it's new for many businesses. So check out our microsite and see how that can help you recycle more food waste. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, please do keep your questions coming in. Um, I'll, I'll get an update in a minute about the, the hashtags as well, um, but there'll be lots more information you can find out about that, I'm sure, afterwards, uh, and go on, uh, on Twitter and, uh, and, and play with some of the measurement tools. They're all good fun. Um, in terms of, um, it, it, yeah, back to the, 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 the sector, mm -hmm. You've got 25. So you've said 25% by yeah, turnover, roughly. Yeah. roughly. Um, what about the what about the other 75? I mean, there's a there's a long tail. I'm sure, yeah. very small organisations. Some of them are very very yeah. active and, and and showing real leadership. But yeah. what about the other 75%? Where well, do we get where, where do we get them involved? Well, I think the the key thing here is what we've published today is the, is the business case for action. You know, here is a clear, articulated piece of research that says this is, a, this is what it means for your subsector within the hospitality and food service sector, and this is what it actually means uh, for your business, and you can save money now. Frankly, if you then want to work with other companies, mm -hmm. learn from their best practice, and set yourself some challenging objectives, join the agreement. And we, yeah, by all means, we'd like to see more people join us, work together towards this common goal. Mm -hmm. So yes, I think what, what we've got today is, is a, uh, some good data to say, here is the business case for action. Come and join us. We can help you deliver the outcome. One of the other things that the agreement's doing is uh, it's looking to improve staff training around waste prevention issues. So we're working with the Chartered Institute of Environmental Health and City and Guilds to incorporate waste prevention training materials into training for people moving into the sector. So that's another way we're hopefully to get to spread the word wider than the agreement. Mm -hmm. The key thing is come and join us if you think it'll benefit your business. We think it will. And a million tons of food waste, just under 920,000. Yeah. I nearly remembered that number, yeah. um, but it's your job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and you know, and a very large amount of money that that's costing. Yep. As I said earlier, you know, it seems to me that the economics alone, uh, you know, should should be driving uh, organisations to really, really look very seriously at this. Yes, I, I think so. And I think the key thing is, is there is an evidence base now on which to think mm -hmm. about that. But there's also there's simple guidance available on the website for people to say, how can I take this forward in my catering establishment, in my business, and how can I start doing that tomorrow? So we were sat here about a year ago, not quite, because I was doing November and I had a terrible moustache at that point. <laughs> um, but what, what um, if we're sat, if we're lucky enough to be sat here in a year's time mm. talking about progress, mm. what what do you think will be the measures? What are we what are we going to be talking about in? You know, in, in, in 60 seconds or so. What, what, what do you think we'll be talking about? Well, I think what we'll be doing is moving away from, at the moment we say, here's the business case for action. Mm -hmm. What we need you, uh, I think, that will help you as a business is measure what exactly is happening in your kitchen so that you can find ways of reducing it. This time next year, John, we'll be talking, I hope, mm -hmm. about these are all the great things that are being done in kitchens throughout the land, in canteens throughout the land, that are actually reducing food waste and increasing packaging. So we'll be into the phase of we're now delivering the change. That's what I'm hoping. Okay, well, well me too. Um, personally, I think I'm, you know, I'm very keen to see uh, a lot more action around, um, uh, around the consumer end, I suppose, and that interface, particularly thinking about fast food, uh, on-the-go material. Uh, there were some, uh, some other poll results out uh, a week or two back which show that um, perhaps people aren't taking the, 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 the message with them, if you like, in, in, their, in their heads when they leave um, their, their property and, and, and go on the go. So I think there's, there's an awful lot more to do around there. We clearly have got uh, more work to do to embed these messages, make it the proper default so that you're always find, looking for the, the bin, mm -hmm. the right bin for the, the thing that's in your hand, mm -hmm. uh, the juicy uh, ju uh, juice or smoothie mm -hmm. bottle or whatever it might be. It should be a juicy bottle really, shouldn't it? Um, so um, but, uh, thank you very much for, for that. Um, was there any last points you wanted to make in terms of you know, the, 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 um, the, the uh, research today? Uh, just to say that it's all on our website. Uh, 
and uh, simple guidance is also on our website and it's really been great working with the, uh, the major um, uh, in, in associations in the sector to produce this guidance. Take advantage of it, hopefully it's really clear and simple to use. Mm -hmm. Okay, well I think we're, we're near enough on time and if it's okay now I think we're going to, uh, to move to the, the short film. Um, and uh, so thank you again to Dr. Richard Swanell from RAP um, and we hope very much to be talking about uh, the, the progress uh, over the last, uh, the next year in a year's time. Um, so enjoy, enjoy the film and we'll be back in five minutes or so um, to, uh, uh, with a panel debate. So thank you very much. Thank you, John. Um, we're here at Greenford Depot um, in KN's dedicated distribution centre for Spirit Pub Company. Um, we have uh, full warehousing and distribution for the whole south of the country out of this site. So, and we deliver all of the food to Spirit's pubs direct from here. Um, on average, two to three deliveries per pub per week across the entire south of the country. Every single pub, every single brand, um, they all have the same resource to recycle, and it's all via K&N. Um, we have around 22 vehicles dispatched every day direct to pubs with deliveries, around 7 to 12 deliveries on those, um, and we pick and load and distribute around 110,000 cases per week to Spirit Pubs. All of our pubs within um, Spirit who recycle compliantly, so each commodity that they send back to um, Spirit via K&N, um, we will pay them a, a credit for each one just to encourage them to recycle. Um, we pick up a variety of waste for recycling from Spirit, so we pick up waste cooking oil, um, cardboard, hard and soft plastics, tins and also crushed glass waste. Which so they'll have between two and three deliveries a week, so they can return their waste streams on those deliveries. So it's it's an easy win for a pub because they get the delivery in, they can send the waste back. Um, generally, on average, you'd have um, around eight to ten cages of cardboard and oil waste per vehicle. So for each of those 22 vehicles, um, we'd also have um, a degree of food waste plastic and or glass waste from those customers as well. So around six boxes per customer of food or glass waste in um, plastic boxes that are stored under the vehicle. This has become uh, a routine. It keeps my, uh, especially my kitchen team, motivated as they get just on their performance as well. So uh, they are very much engaged and very much motivated. It has become, you know, a very much culture of our business. The driver will make the delivery to the pub, so he will decant all of the food from the cage into the customer's delivery area. Um, the driver will then um, leave an empty cage and pick up a cage preloaded with oil, waste oil and cardboard. Um, he will then also collect the full totes of food and or glass waste put those on the vehicle and replace them with clean totes for the customer to then reuse prior to their next delivery. The driver then obviously continues around the route um, and comes back to site here where we deal with the waste via a couple of processes um, on site here through the recycling team that we have based here. We do support our pubs as much as we can. We've created waste posters, we're on the end of the phone um, if they've got any issues in terms of how they recycle. Um, K and N, uh, Coon and Argyle are very supportive. If again they've got, if the pubs are struggling, the um, waste oil and cardboard comes off of the vehicle, um, and the waste oil is returned for use to make biodiesel. Um, cardboard and food and glass waste are then sent back via skips with approved suppliers who then recycle those materials, be it via anaerobic digestion or to make biodiesel um, recycle cardboard. I have to say we get questioned by the guests saying what do you do with your wastage? So uh, my team and myself do take our time to actually explain to our guests what we do with our wastage. 
Since we've been operating here for Spirit since um, May of last year, um, certainly personally I think there's been an upward trend in the amount of waste oil that we receive back. Certainly in terms of the compliance when it's in the quality of the waste that we get back and the presentation of that has been increased. And we have had a number of customers who have actually started recycling throughout that time. So we are actually dealing with more than we were when we first started up. I'd say from a spirit point of view, it will still be around engaging pubs from GMs down to team players to recycle and um, encourage them to be greener for the environment. Um, I also think that obviously we've got to work towards the zero to landfill. Um, so by having um, all these various ideas in place, um, we are working really hard towards that, but I think it is just the engagement and the education and still driving the same um, recycling platform that we want to go with really because it can never fall off the agenda. It's, it's got to be part of everyday life. Thanks very much for watching the, uh, the video, uh, the film. I hope you enjoyed it. I understand it may have been a s slightly loud at the start, so apologies if it uh, woke you up at the start. Um, but uh, welcome back anyway. Um, so, again, I hope you enjoyed the poll. Uh, I have an iPad here, a mini, uh, which keeps going off. Um, but we've got the results of the poll in. Um, so that you'll remember it was the biggest barrier uh, to you, for your business in tackling food waste. Um, and uh, the uh, results uh, were 36% of people um, saying the cost, uh, for example, new equipment, 9% lack of infrastructure, 0% uh, lack of guidance and support. So well done those giving guidance and support. Uh, you're doing very well, it's not a barrier. 36% um, engaging my staff, which I think it, you know, we'd all, we'd all um, expect to see a result like that. Um, and 18% saying other. So if you'd like to tell us what the other is, that would be really helpful. Um, if you start your message with the word other, then we'll apply it to the, uh, the, the poll that we've just had. We now have another poll uh, to, keep you, uh, to keep you going. Um, and um, the, uh, the next poll is, do you measure the amount of food wasted uh, from your uh, business? Um, answer one, never. Uh, two, once a year. Three, quarterly. Four, monthly. Five, weekly and six uh, daily, uh, which I think would be a surprise, but uh, we'll ask the question anyway. Um, so we've now got a, a panel debate coming up, coming up. We'll come back to you the, with the results of that poll in a, in a few minutes, and we'll have another one for you before we finish. Um, so the panel session is going to be looking at the, uh, the bigger picture um, through the supply chain. And um, from, my, uh, from my left, uh, I believe it's my left, you're, you're right as you look, uh, we've got Thomas Nicol from uh, Pret-a-Manger. Uh, we have Inda Pinaji from uh, Nestlé UK and Ireland. Uh, we have Lucy Frankel from Vegware. Uh, Richard Swanell, who you've all met already, uh, virtually. Uh, and uh, we also then have Giles Whiteley from uh, uh, SWR. So thanks very much for joining us today. Um, we'll start off with a, you know, a, a, a general question that's, uh, that's come in. Um, so, for example, there are, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, food service companies uh, that have signed up to the, uh, the, the, the agreement. One of the things we talked about just now, Richard. But there are equally a, a large number that, um, that aren't. And also there's the clients of those uh, organisations. So wh how do you see that playing out? What's the, what are the biggest opportunities there? If I start with, with you. Biggest opportunities. Um, the biggest opportunities are taking advantage of the advices available to you and then being able to overcome the obstacles within your company and um, get some real, real good behavioural changes happening in those days so you can take advantage of them. So those who sign the agreement cascading the information ultimately? I think so definitely because if you've looked at your poll it's getting the staff involved. Mm -hmm. It's actually making enthusiasm mm -hmm. sort of on the ground level happen and understanding the, the benefits of it and the negatives of it at the same time to actually understand people actually this is a serious issue to tackle. Uh, Inda? I, I think when you join an organisation or a format like that, 
what happens is you get top level agreement mm -hmm. that this is something we're quite serious about, this is something the organisation needs to do. So at the top level, once it's signed, then you've got to do something about it and then you can start setting your targets mm -hmm. and your plan which you want to go through. And it's that collective, and my experience with RAP, which I've worked for, I don't know how many years now, has been that, that you, you, you get involved, you get top level agreement, get your policies in place, set your targets, and then use all the learnings you can from RAP for the best sharing, and that really gets the momentum going. Mm -hmm. Lucy? I think there's going to be a lot of learnings coming down from Scotland. As you know, from the 1st of January, there's going to be a legal requirement for all businesses to recycle. Thousands of food businesses are going to have to have food waste recycling. Mm -hmm. So I think there's going to be a lot of learnings coming into play there in the sector that people are going to be able to see that, yes, they're actually, it's more practical. There is all sorts of cost savings you can make. And I think actually there's going to have a trickle-down effect from Scotland that these learnings can be put into place in the rest of the sector around the rest of the UK. Richard. I think one of the key aspects of the Hostility Food Service Agreement is, is that we not only we engage in the companies that can deliver it themselves, but also the clients of those companies. So a lot of the supporters are actually those who do procure contracts. So all government departments, for example, and, and indeed uh, in, in, in Scotland and in Wales as well, are, are actually supporters of these. And that's really good to hear because that means you can, you're not only getting it through the agreement and indeed building on what Inda said, you know, setting your own targets in that space is really good, setting the policy direction is really good, but also having your customer your client saying, yes, I want you to do this, is a really good supportive measure. Mm -hmm. And that's what's key about the agreement. And, uh, well, and Giles, you're a, you're a supporter of the, 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 the yep, agreement, absolutely. a signatory to it. What, what's, your, what's your view on that cascading? Um, I think it's, it's going to be interesting times. We've just been, I mean, you've got to remember this was launched in the middle of uh, the biggest recession yeah. since the 30s. And signing up to anything like this re it represents um, a big overhead to business. Um, I totally agree that watching what happens in Scotland is going to be very, very interesting. Um, but I think the, the, um, the fact that there's a groundswell now, the fact it's front page news, is something that, I mean, the fact that food waste is on the front page of a newspaper. Mm -hmm. I, you show me when it's even got onto the third page in the last 20 mm. years. So it's really up there. So I think you will see people starting to take note. And I think it's a really good time for a new groundswell to come with the, uh, with the agreement, actually. Mm. Uh, another question that's coming in, just picking up on, uh, you know, on your particular take, if you like, is around backhauling mm -hmm. um, and, and the role that that could play. And there has been a bit of debate and discussion about that lately. So what would you, what would you say about that? Um, if you've got the means to do it, then fantastic. Um, I think it's, it's not going to be right for everybody. Um, at the end of the day, there isn't room in the food supply chain for everybody to backhaul. Mm -hmm. if, there just simply isn't going to work. But someone like Spirit, who's just been in the film, um, one of our customers that we work with, mm -hmm. um, you, know, you know, it worked very, very well. And they've um, put that into the agreement with their supply chain. It's rather than being an afterthought, when they've gone out to work with um, K&N, um, it's, it's, it's intrinsic to the contract. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they're doing spectacularly well. Um, you know, for a smaller firm that hasn't got that sort of perhaps buying power and sway over their, um, their, their sort of delivery and supply chain, it's going to be much harder. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you just got to look at it as just one tool in, in the kit that if it's available to you, you should, you should look at and investigate. It's got to commercially stack up. Um, and if it doesn't, then explore something else. There's you know. a scale issue there. I, 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 I think it is a bank yeah. is a real scale yeah, issue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, and Lucy, you're, you're a signature as well, a supporter of the, the agreement. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you think that the, the, the debate over the, the food waste is maybe overshadowing the packaging aspect, or are they, are they seen very much as you know, hand in glove, as it were? Well, for us, we are part of the same debate. I mean, I'm very pleased that, as Giles was saying, food waste is now headline news. After all, it's a, it's a scandalous waste of resources, mm. not only of, from growers in our country, but all around the world. So, absolutely, I'm very glad that food waste is now on the headlines. Um, but for us, it's part of the same debate because we, we design food service packaging that is for food waste recycling. We are getting rid of the contamination issue by making coffee cups and spoons and so on that's designed for food waste recycling. And so through that, we've then taken it a step further and we've started mapping all food waste recycling services in the whole of the UK. Um, we've launched it as a free service for the food waste network for any UK business to use. And so through that, we're actually a part of the food waste debate because we're helping people uh, share best practice with uh, recipes for using up yesterday's slightly stale bread and so on on our blog. So really, we are 
very pleased that this is, this is now um, everybody's interested in the food waste debate because for us it's part of the same thing. Mm -hmm. oh, excellent. I'm sure we'll come back to that aspect uh, a, a little later on. Um, and, and Thomas, I just wanted to come to you and then I'll come to you, Indo, again. Um, in terms of um, PrEP, obviously you're looking at this issue globally, uh, the issue around waste. Is it, is it just an economic issue or is it more of a, you know, is it more a moral issue? Is it more fundamental than just economics? Well, I, I think waste is definitely a, a commercial issue as well as an ethical issue mm -hmm. because ultimately having waste is, is a problem and you should be able to reduce or ultimately the benefit of having no waste would um, solve both problems. Um, if you look at it ethically, um, we make freshly made sandwiches every single day. Um, so our good hard work and our quality ingredients shouldn't go to waste if it's still edible. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually have um, connections with charities throughout the whole of the UK um, from every single shop. So 95% of our shops have a connection with a charity and that leads us to donate 2.5 million products a year to charities throughout the UK. So it's actually something that we're looking at globally. In every single country we'll have a connection with a charity. So for example in Hong Kong, I know we work a lot with Feeding Hong Kong. So it's, it's, it's actually all about having this connection but then ultimately looking at the basic principles of our waste hierarchy and then saying aiming for zero waste to landfill at the end of the park. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, keep the questions coming in, remember. I don't know which camera I'm on these days, that one. Um, keep the questions coming in uh, through Twitter and also through the, the, the screen, the box below. Um, uh, Inda, there's, talking about the, the global context, if you like, and, uh, and I guess, you know, to a degree, large organisations are acting in a way that, you know, almost the government has to keep up. Uh, of an individual um, nation or, or, or state. Um, but what, there's a lot of you know, indices, the Dow Jones Sustainability Index and Carbon Trust with uh, various tools and standards. Does it help or is it just another, another bunch of quality management system um, or paperwork? The, uh, there's different types. The, the Oxfam one is the one which we've sort of rated qu quite highly in recently. That's totally independent. That's one, not where you enter anything. Mm -hmm. They judge you. And it's good because it puts the focus on you to do more. So those kind, the Oxfam one, is the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, also focuses on for you to do more. So those kind of standards um, and those kind of um, indexes are really useful. Because wh wh one thing you've got to remember, this is not just about um, being good in the index. There's investors out there looking at these things. So it's a much more complex picture. The question you asked earlier, it's about environmental, social, and economic reasons you do. So the economic reasons are quite clear. The social reasons are quite clear, hygiene and issues with waste, I mean, contamination. But the environmental impacts are quite interesting. We're up to now, I think, we haven't got sophisticated enough to understand that waste also has water, energy, labor, which we don't really account for. So we're just seeing waste as a cost, but it's much more than that. It's much more of an environmental impact. Mm. And as we move and get more sophisticated. But to answer your question, yes, there are a lot of standards there. You've got to have a look which one's for you. But, you know, there's some great stuff which RAP does. The, uh, the UK Environment Agency is probably one of the best with the hierarchy. So, Richard, there were a number of statistics I know you've, you've used for your <coughs> research, particularly around the water footprint of uh, the water impact of, of wasted food and resources. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we did some research with WWF a few years ago looking at the, um, the water footprint of uh, the food waste that was produced in the home and that, if my memory serves me right, it's around 5% of our total water footprint is just down to food waste. Um, and it's interesting because um, uh, the research we published today that, you know, looks at the total cost of waste and that, that's not just disposal costs and ingredient costs, that is also what you know, people who actually uh, invest their time and effort, it's the, it's the utilities, the electricity, everything else is so it gives you a real clear understanding. The £2,800 a tonne on average is, th is that more true cost of waste rather than what people often see, which is just you know, the line uh, uh, on the end of the bill, which is this is how much it costs you to take it away and dispose of it in some way. And it's, it's getting that in, and that's, an, that's a debate. It was really good to hear uh, Giles say, you know, the food waste has really come up the agenda. Mm. And one of the things that's in, is encouraging that is when people are really understanding 
the total cost of waste and the benefits they could do through reducing it. I'd just like to pick up that thread and I mean yeah, one of the questions that's come in again from a non, uh, one of the previous questions by the way was from uh, uh, from uh, Sustainable CSR Solutions, thank you very much, um, but there's a, another a non question, um, do you think industry um, could or should really do more to promote the love food hate waste um, style of campaign and obviously the messaging within that. It's something we, we talked about briefly in the, in the first section, Richard, um, particularly around obviously consumers but also staff because if everyone gets it, as you're saying, mm -hmm. then they take it to work with them as well as when they're out at the shops. So, in the I mean, three years ago, I think we ran a whole campaign of love food, hate waste across every Nestle employee. So all our employees have gone through that love food. And um, we've run it for two years running. We've had rap coming in. But we also extended that to the local community at school levels and things. So I, I think it's a great campaign, and it, it's one that really does engage staff in. It's and certainly got a fun edge. You know, the, it's, the material it's is quite interesting. It's, it's fantastic. Well, it's, it's to do with refinding the knowledge that we've somehow forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, in everybody's family history, there's always a fantastic recipe for what to do with the leftovers of some wonderful meal. <laughs> and so it's bringing that um, practical know-how back into the commercial kitchen. Mm -hmm. Because we all have this knowledge. It's just a matter of actually applying our common sense. And it's, it's, a, it's really good fun. We found it to be a fantastic way of engaging with people on this issue. And uh, actually, we've just, we're just about to have our, our own uh, uh, online magazine the second issue is just about to come out and that has a big feature with lots and lots of uh, love your leftovers recipes so it's a really good way of engaging people I think. That's great. Giles? Oh, I couldn't agree more. I mean I sort of sit outside the um, food service industry as the uh, resident bin man here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, we, sort of, you know, we talk in our business about it because we have to uh, understand that our staff need to be sort of uh, practicing what they preach. Um, it's a strange position for a waste company to be in because ultimately we have to admit we make money by taking waste away. Um, but we are very keen to take less waste away from our customers and see them, and see them do a lot more. So I run a just-in-time policy in my fridge, which means it's empty all the time. <laughs> um, it's easy to stop and pass you know, a, a, a shop on the way home um, rather than sort of you know, be throwing away vegetables like I used to do. Well, yeah, hopefully I, we are we are the converted. You know, my story of the uh, the largest croissant in the world ever this morning was just a challenge as opposed to a problem uh, for me, and I did finish it. Um, <laughs> the, poll, the poll results are in. Uh, I should cycle more, by the way. The poll <laughs> results are in um, uh, now. Uh, the uh, never in terms of measuring food waste is second highest at 29%, uh, so slightly scary. Um, my challenge of, to those of you who measure daily, 14% uh, of you do apparently, um, which will please everyone uh, immensely, um, and 43% monthly, which is I guess what you'd probably expect. Um, and perhaps you know there is more data that we can uh, we can gather because if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, uh, as one of those old adages which I quite like. So uh, moving on, we've got another poll, the last poll of the morning, poll three. We've made this one as easy as possible because we've been working you very hard out, out there. Um, this one is a simple yes no. Uh, you don't have to think too much. Um, are your customers concerned about food waste? So perhaps picking up on one of the one or two of the points just talked about as a panel. Um, so one, yes. Two, no. Very simple, nice and easy. Um, shouldn't trouble you too much. Are your customers uh, concerned about food waste? Okay, so we've got a lot of questions to get through now. We're going to rattle through them now. Um, we've got uh, more coming in as well. Um, but I've got a, a couple I'd like to, to, to put to you. Um, uh, Lucy, I'll come back to you and this, this point around packaging and you know, is there really enough innovation? Uh, and where does that innovation sit? Is it for packaging companies to present the latest high-tech uh, you know, solution? Or is it actually for, you know, for, for brands and for those delivering product mm. to, to really think hard about where, what their role is in terms of reducing the cost or making it easier to do? Well, I think the answer is all of the above, essentially, predictably. I think that everyone throughout the supply chain, it's their responsibility to constantly look at what they're offering and how it could be a little bit better. Um, I have to say that there are options out there that um, people don't always take up. Um, any, any minor change 
always includes a bit of uh, a bit of work around making a change. Everyone's familiar with that. But so what we're trying to do with our products, whenever we innovate and make something new, we're trying to make it fit in with people's existing structures, their existing shapes, the way they organise their kitchens, and so on. So yes, innovation. There's a massive uh, role for the whole of the packing, packaging, packaging sector to look at what they're using and see how it can um, make a positive impact on the recyclability, the real life recyclability, mm. um, and then also look at the, the ways they can reduce the environmental impact of the materials that they're using as well. Mm. Uh, it's a complex arena, obviously, Richard, and so you know, uh, I guess to a degree the agreement is the convener of all that talent and ideas and mm. hopefully can quicken the process, you know, what Lucy's been describing there. That's one of the key things we set out with the Hospitality and Food Service Agreement to do, was to drive change more quickly. And I think the experience we've had from other agreements like the Courtauld Commitment is that's exactly what happens, because you bring people together, and, we, and we've got a series of working groups, for example, which focus on particular areas, bringing experts together with the trade associations, and really try and drive change more quickly. Spread the innovations, get more widespread take-up. But I think the key advantage is, is that we're beginning to send common messages down the supply chain. The real benefit of the court old commitment is we're saying we're tackling food waste, we're working on optimising packaging and we're looking at supply chain waste and then the whole suppliers came in behind and said right okay there are your objectives, we've seen you sign up to that, we're going to help you deliver that and that's exactly the same thing we're beginning to see through the hospitality and food service agreement and, and critically and critically, one of the things that we've got to try and do is drive that as fast as we can. Mm, yeah, Lucy. I do want to come back on that to do with innovation that uh, without some sort of um, boot up the bum in forms of legislation, <laughs> um, innovation is going to be done for commercial advantage. advantage. So we innovate, it's part of what we do, we've had 900% uh, growth in five years, so that's our thing. But in Scotland, people are going to have to recycle. There's a lot of innovation around necessity. So uh, what happens when you have to segregate more waste streams well, then the bin manufacturers come in and they have some fantastic new ideas because they have to. So I really it, think there's a role here for legislation. Is this sector maybe though, and the, the, thing, the challenge we've been discussing there, one where actually a target to reduce the amount rather than recycle as much as possible is the right way round mm. uh, and perhaps we've learnt that from some of the municipal targets and I'll come back to you in a minute Giles and yeah, I, was, I was just going to come back and pick up on your point. Mm. Um, we produced a product called Nestle Refill which is a brick pack. Now you could say that's an innovation but if you went back a hundred years that's how it's you not. got your coffee. <laughs> 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 yes. And that reduced 50% uh, distribution, if we had 50% fewer lorries we used 38% less water. So, you know, it's not just about disruptive innovation, it's great ideas in the past which need to come back in. And, and then, then picking on the, the thing, the point is, there, you know, we need, I, I think in the UK what we need is people in garages coming up with great, great solutions and then coming out with them. And somehow these great ideas and solutions just don't filter through and up. Jars, commercial advantage in there in, in being good at helping your customers waste less? Um, absolutely. Look, this is gone in the days where you know, a waste company um, takes away you know, a, a bin, puts it in a big truck and sticks it in a hole in the ground. Um, you know, there is a huge ar array of um, solutions out there and companies out there. Gone in the days where you could find a waste company and they would all do the same. You know, we work with 400 waste companies around the UK and, we, and we've had to whittle that down and there's so many good ones out there. Some people say that they're frustrated that the waste company isn't doing enough or they're not getting what they need from the waste company. I would challenge them and say that you wouldn't go to an IT supplier with an IT problem. You, you'd go and you'd look at your problem, you'd define what you need and you'd go and find a solution for it. That's how companies need to start behaving when they talk to, to, to the waste companies because um, there are so many different options and so many different solutions out there. It depends what you need. Do a little bit more work, go and find the right partner because they can work with you over the course of a number of years. And if, that, if your target is reduction, then find someone that's going to help you measure. Find someone that's going to actually work with your supply chain and really get involved. If you've just got cardboard, mm. then find someone that's the best guy for cardboard. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's not sort of um, one size fits all anymore.
A couple of questions coming in on this, and Thomas, coming back to you. You know, the, the stuff back of house you can control. Um, it, it's easier to, to, to manage, but of course, you know, one, once it's front of house and left the premises, it, 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 it's sort of gone in a way, but still got your name on it. Um, so, what, what sort of what, what do you see your role there in thinking about the future and uh, and really making sure that this material does end up in the right place? I suppose. Well, I think it's all about actually having the right messages on packaging as well at the moment. It's influencing your customers to be able to say, well, this one part of this is recyclable and it's best to send this into this waste stream and be able to separate waste and make packaging mm -hmm. um, that's suitable for different waste streams. Um, in terms of having um, the availability to, to dispose of different wastes in, in different areas of the, of the country, that's... It's, it's completely um, dependent upon where, where you are in the country and, and, and what available facilities there are. Mm. Um, so it's all about convincing your customers that you have something that is suitable for different streams and being able to actually convince them that it should go into different um, recycling facilities mm. where available. Mm -hmm. Inda? I mean, the, the latest innovation we've had is something called Beyond the Label, so on our KitKat bar, you get the QR code and you can scan that. Right. And that has you know, it, loads of information about environment impact and what you can do. And I think that sort of innovation, that's the kind of thing. Uh, just not putting on labels, I think, is a bit... We it's need access to, to more information. Yeah, we need to get to, uh, new channels of information using... And there's different generations access information differently. And, and I think that's what we need to find, is those different channels so we can get the messaging right. There's a lot of questions coming in about um, uh, the, the challenge of more... Uh, legislation and uh, you know, Lucy mentioned some of that but you know perhaps on the other side what, what what's the bigger driver out there in terms of you know brands and uh, the industry moving moving forward without without in, uh, legislation well I think the real thing is wanting to reduce your costs I mean that we can we can talk about the sustainability aspect but we all have to convince mm. accountants mm. for anything <laughs> that we want to do so um, Highlighting the cost savings that, are, that you can make. We um, actually tomorrow we're publishing our own, the first part of our own research called New Year's Revelation, looking at uh, six small businesses in, in the Edinburgh area and the cost of complying with the new, reg, uh, the new regs that are coming in. We found that the majority of them were actually going to save money by complying with the regs, including introducing food waste recycling. Those are um, two out of the six were going to have initial increase in cost turning into a saving over time. Mm -hmm. So really the message out is that we really want to get out there is that the total recycling is the way forward for making sense of your business and uh, you're obviously boosting sustainability, mm -hmm. you can shout about it, but really it's reducing costs. Fantastic. 15 seconds each, uh, Richard and Giles. Biggest, biggest challenge, biggest opportunity? The biggest opportunity in my mind is undoubtedly waste prevention. Mm -hmm. And I think that's clear when the research produced today. This is where to focus, this is where you can make the biggest impact. So measure and then act. And Giles? biggest challenge is when people wake, wake up to the fact that bins are going to start to be getting weighed more and more and True. it's going to and it's going to basically what you're paying now unless you're doing it properly is going to escalate and escalate and it's going to be a real driver of taking food waste out of general waste so i'm really looking forward to that but there's there are some surprises coming i agree with that entirely okay um fantastic thank you very much to our to our panel uh, we won't do a round of applause because it's just us really here. Um, but I'm sure back at home you're, you're uh, applauding and, uh, or, uh, or uh, heckling. Um, the poll results are in. Um, are your customers concerned about food waste uh, and recycling? The answer is uh, a very clear yes, 67%. Again, we're very pleased to see that. A very large majority, no. Uh, 33%. I suppose we didn't offer a don't know on that one, did we? So um, anyway, um, we're now pretty much at the end of the, uh, end of the session. So what I'd like to do is just say thank you um, very much um, to all of our panellists and, and, uh, and in particular to, um, to Richard and, and, and Rap and, and look out for that report. Um, remember that you can uh, download the, uh, and watch again this session and please, so, uh, please pass on um, the details to others who perhaps couldn't make it uh, live this morning and you can watch us all stumble over our words or me in particular stumble over our words again um, there's certainly been some some advances in the discussion since last year and uh, hopefully we'll be able to um, 
uh, you know, report back on similar advances. I think there's a plan to perhaps do it slightly more frequently, um, but at least in a year's time we'll be able to do that. Um, and uh, so basically it's uh, a thank you very much from, from me and from everyone at uh, footprintchannel.tv um, for you uh, dialing in and asking your questions and participating this morning. Thanks very much.